too many people to induce a sense of panic in the ruling class. It takes very little to panic them. They're always the one percent are fearful because they do know the power of the 99 percent. Now in 1965 and 1966 the ruling elites were not that frightened of Martin Luther King. They thought Martin Luther King was preferable to people like Malcolm X, people like the Panthers. They felt he was on the path of moderation, of nonviolence. They thought that he was no big threat. Then in April of 1967, Martin Luther King gave a speech in the Riverside Church in New York City. This was a very different Martin Luther King. I'll give you a few sentences from that speech in the Riverside Church, but if you have a computer or if you have an access to one and you want to see a great speech, Everyone talks about the dream speech and all that. You go look at the Riverside Church speech. I'll give you a couple of, couple of uh, sentences from it. A true revolution in values will soon look uneasily on the glaring contrast of poverty and wealth. With righteous indignation, it will look across the seas and see individual capitalists of the West investing huge sums of money in Asia, Africa, and South America, only to take the profits out with no concern for the social betterment of the countries. And these people will say, this is not just. And then he also said, a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. But the phrase that really put the elites on their toes was when he said the United States government is, quote, the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. With those words, Martin Luther King drew a line and he probably signed his own death warrant. Right. Like Kennedy did? Kennedy wrote. Then, then he came under merciless attack. Life magazine called the speech demagogic slander that sounded like a script from Radio Hanoi. when Martin Luther King really challenged the status quo. And there comes a time in every movement when you cross a line. When people who have been comfortable, you know, when the Occupy movement first began, there were friendly editorials in many newspapers. You could turn on your TV and you would see commentators talking favorably about this spirit, this new spirit. But then when the issues, when the lines in the sand begin to be drawn, when people say that America, it is unacceptable to have 1% earning on almost all the wealth. It is unacceptable to have the Congress of the United States in the pay of the 1%. It is unacceptable that wars are fought for the benefit of the 1%. It doesn't take long before people say that the movement is becoming sectarian. It's becoming violence oriented. It should be hunted out of the squares in every city in America where it has taken root. It doesn't take much, as I said at the start, to panic the American ruling elites. And then they start to throw the book at you. Then you get the SWAT teams, then you get the tax squads. And in the 60s, about the time that Martin Luther King was murdered in 
in, in Nashville. Was it Nashville, Tennessee, Memphis? I've got confused. Memphis, sorry, in Memphis. By that time, the police forces of America, the FBI, were murdering leaders, particularly African American leaders, lock, stock, and barrel. So, I think the Occupy movement at the moment, I think, has stepped back. It had to because of the police chasing them out and the winter chasing them out of where they were. But when they come back in the spring, I think there's a time when there will be distraction this year. When Obama and the people supporting Obama will say, he's better than Mitt Romney. I don't think you could get a credit card between the two of them. Frankly. And there's another example of panic. Some of you have TV sets. You may have seen the commercials that Newt Gingrich is putting out. Have any of you seen these commercials? Where they see what he did with Bain Capital. Bain Capital was the firm that Mitt Romney had that they would take over businesses. They would kick out the workers. They would say, now this is a profitable concern. We've lowered the wages. And that's how he made his money. Well, Newt Gingrich, who is no friend of the poor, has been putting these films denouncing Romney on the TV. Only yesterday, the New York Times said, this is going a little bit far. We don't want too much discord. We don't want these people fighting. So there's no real choice this year. But what the Occupy movement has done is taken us back to an era that Martin Luther King was in the 60s where you say this is unacceptable. We cannot have a situation where everything is owned by the 1%. In the same way that Martin Luther King said in the Riverside Church, we have a government that is the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today. We are exploiting the planet and that is unacceptable. So the memory of Martin Luther King, it's about dreams but it's also about the courage to draw a line right there and say, we cannot go on crossing this line. This is a moral line. This is a line that concerns power and the world. And now today, America is on that line and people know that what we have got to these years after Martin Luther King was murdered is completely unacceptable. And it's his example that will inspire us as we go forward into this year. Thank you.